In the 1960s, two Norwegian mathematicians, Dahl and Nygaard, decided that they wanted a programming language that would allow them to simulate things, mathematical things. And they created a language called Simula. Now, at the time, they didn't think this was terribly novel, but it turned out that it was a huge step forward. Alan Kay, who was working at Park Research, had a look at a Simula program. He knew nothing about Simula, but he had an 80-page printout and taught himself Simula from this 80-page printout. And he realised that it was really different. He took the principles that uh, Dahl and Nygaard had created and turned them into a way programming languages might work. Time went on and Bjarne Strastrup, a Swedish mathematician, decided he needed a, a language that would work for Bell Computing. Bell Computing wanted a language that would allow them to simulate things. And he created something called C++, which was a step forward from C. C++ worked differently to C. C is a procedural language, where you could break the problem down into blocks and program each block separately. But in C++, you didn't just organise the logic, you also organised the data. And that meant that you could reuse these data types in other programs. So you decided which data types they were, you decided what these data types could do, and you decided where you wanted to reuse them. That's called object-oriented programming. The data types, the things, they are the objects. And you could use these things in all sorts of places. Now the big advantage of this, obviously, is the reuse. On the downside, it meant another step forward for programmers. Programmers had to think again about how they did things. All modern languages are object-oriented. All of them. The first thing that everybody wants to do when they start programming is to sit down and write some code. But in the case of object-oriented programming, that would be a real disaster. You have to sit down and decide on exactly what you want to do first. So in this simple case, I've got a program where I'm going to use some students in a class with a lecturer, maybe a timetabling system. So student, class and lecturer become my objects. For each student I need a student ID and a student name and I need to be able to add a student. For each class I need to be able to create a new class, decide on which lecturer and which students get added and for the lecturers I need to be able to add another lecturer. So these are my objects and the doing things they become procedures within the object. So each data type has its own things that it can do.